urinary tract infections. Especially, today we'll be talking about UTI in women in particular. Urinary tract infection is a collective term that describes any infection that involves any part of the urinary tract, namely the kidneys, ureter, bladder and urethra. To simplify it, when kidneys and ureters are involved, we call it upper urinary tract infection and when bladder or urethra are involved, we call it lower tract infection. Now there are some facts about UTI which one must know. Urinary tract infection, if you don't know, are among the most common bacteria infections. It affects around 150 million people worldwide every year. Women are much more prone to get UTI as compared to men. And at least 50% of all women will get urinary tract infection across their lifetime at least once. Recurrences are common here. 25% of the women who present with first episode of cystitis will get a recurrent urinary tract infection within next six months. Now, if you are wondering why it is more common in women, the reasons are three. First is the anatomy. As compared to men, the external opening of the urethra is very close to the anal canal and to the vagina, which is the hub of bacteria flora. Another noteworthy thing is the absence of prostatic secretions in women, which work as bacteriostatics in men. When it comes to the pathogen, only one pathogen you have to remember is E. coli because it is responsible for more than 80% of urinary tract infections. Bacteria like Staphylococcus, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Proteus and Enterococcus are rarely involved in causing urinary tract infections. Even more rare are fungi and viruses but I want you to keep this fungus in mind because sometimes when the patient is not responding to antibacterial treatment or antibiotics, urine microscopy is not revealing any bacteria, neither is the culture, but patient is persistently complaining of symptoms. In these cases, please consider, please remember this thing that yeast infection or fungus can be a rare cause of urinary bladder infection or cystitis. In most of the cases, UTI is a kind of acidic infection. The bacteria, as I have told you before, that usually cause this infection, come from the intestinal tract and live on the skin near the rectum or the vagina in women. So, these bacteria enter the urinary tract through the urethral opening ascend into the urethra and then multiply and grow in the bladder and if not treated at that stage also they may ascend up through the ureters towards the kidney. So how do you classify urinary tract infections? There are various classifications and terminologies but the one which is clinically important is to tell whether it is an uncomplicated or complicated urinary tract infection. Complicated UTI here means the one which is associated with some structural or functional abnormality of the urinary tract. European Association of Urology gave a classification system called ORENAC which is practical and simple. In this O stands for zero. That means where there are no risk factors. R is risk factors for recurrence like sexual behavior, postmenopausal status, diabetes that is well controlled. E is for extra urogenital risk factors like pregnancy, immunosuppression, and 
uncontrolled diabetes. N stands for nephropathic diseases. Easy to understand would be the diseases that are treated in nephrology department, which is like medicine part of renal system. These diseases include polycystic nephropathy and interstitial nephritis. U likewise is used for diseases that are treated in urology department, that is like surgery counterpart of treating renal diseases. These diseases include uretric stones, neurogenic bladder, etc. C is for catheters, that is long-term catheterized patient. Now if you look at this, ORE comes in uncomplicated while NUC is for complicated UTI. The other important terminologies one must know in relation to UTI are number one recurrent UTI that means if the infection of urinary system has occurred more than or equal to two times in six months or more than or equal to three infections in one year. Next is asymptomatic bacteriuria which is also known as ABU. That means that patient has no signs and symptoms related to a UTI but on culture his or her urine is showing quite a number of bacteria in the urine that is at least 10 to the power 5 colony forming units per ml. Usually this kind of asymptomatic infection is not treated but for in pregnancy wherein it is shown to have some negative influence in the pregnancy outcome. When we talk about symptoms and sign, it all depends upon the site of infection. For example, if kidneys are involved, patient will complain of flank pain, high fever, chills and rigor, and nausea and vomiting. If bladder is involved, that's called cystitis, it will be associated with pelvic pressure, lower abdominal pain, frequency, burning, and painful micturition. Patient might also complain of bloody and discolored urine. Urethritis typically presents with just one symptom, that is burning with micturition. Signs again vary depending on the site of infection. In case of pyelonephritis, typically the temperature is high, usually more than 102 degree Fahrenheit. There is associated dehydration and mental confusion at times. Flag tenderness will be noted while palpating the area. In cystitis, the typical finding is suprapubic tenderness. Usually there is no fever. In case of urethritis, which is isolated, tenderness limited to urethral region on vaginal palpation is the typical finding. Diagnosis is made primarily by history. In women with dysuria and frequency, in the absence of vaginitis, the diagnosis is UTI in 80% of the times. Now this sentence is very important in the absence of vaginitis. In my practice, I have seen many times young women and girls repeatedly being treated for cystitis as they presented with burning maturation. While the issue was entirely different, they had burning while passing urine as the area of lower vagina and vulva was excoriated owing to the itching and irritation caused by vaginal infection. For confirmation of diagnosis, urine dipstick or microscopic examination has a very good sensitivity of up to 80 to 90 percent. Urine culture is usually not indicated in majority of cases. Urine culture has a sensitivity of only 50 percent if we take the threshold of 10 to the power 5 colony forming organisms per ml of urine. Thus, it is advised 
only in recurrent UTI cases or in the presence of complicating factors where even the threshold can be reduced to 10 to the power 2 which will increase the sensitivity up to 90%. Talking about the cutoff in urine culture, we have three scenarios for women, for men and inpatient where catheter is in situ. For women, two consecutive specimens with isolation of same bacterial species which is 10 to the power 5 colony forming unit per ml of urine or more is considered a positive test. While in men with same cutoff, only single specimen is enough. For this specimen obtained from the catheter, either for women or men, a single specimen with isolation of one bacterial species which is just 10 to the power 2 colony forming unit per ml of urine is enough to confirm the diagnosis. Treatment of UTI though appears simple but we need to follow some guidelines and trust me there are many. The one I want to suggest is 2010 updated version by both European and American infectious disease societies. These are international guidelines that have been endorsed by almost all urology and OBG societies too. I want all those who are interested to go through this review article in detail for a better understanding. What I am going to do in next few slides is that present a very simplified version of the same. So women with acute uncomplicated cystitis just antibiotic therapy is enough for them. There are many agents to choose from, but the choice depends on patient's allergic history, compliance history, what is the local practice pattern, what is the local resistance prevalence, the availability and the cost, and of course, the doctor's experience for that particular agent. The first line therapy can be either nitrofurantoin 100 mg twice a day for 5 days or trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole double strength tablet twice a day for 3 days. Second line drugs are fluoroquinolones, ciprofloxacin, ufloxacin and levofloxacin. Norfloxacin is not used in many of these regimens these days because of increasing reports of resistance against it. However, in my experience, it is a wonderful drug for uncomplicated cystitis in women in our circumstances where the resistance with Norflox is not that common. Second scenario is women with acute pyelonephritis who do not look too sick to hospitalize. These patients require a urine culture report not just for the sake of confirmation but more importantly to find out antibiotic sensitivity. Oral ciprofloxacin 500 mg BD for 7 days can be given with or without an initial 400 mg dose of IV ciprofloxacin or 1 gram ceftriaxone or a 25 hour cover of any aminoglycoside of choice. The second option is other fluoroquinolones like ufloxacin and levofloxacin or else trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole double strength for 5 to 7 days with or without same the initial IV dose of 1 gram ceftriaxone or else a 24 hour IV cover of aminoglycoside of your choice. Women with acute pyelonephritis who look sick, who have high grade temperature and who require hospitalization also need adequate hydration with IV antibiotics. A crucial point in management is how to prevent recurrences. As I have initially told you that recurrences are very common. 
For more in-depth understanding, you may go through this interesting review article. Very quickly, let me tell you some important aspects of treating a case of recurrent UTI. First, to say it a recurrent UTI, the diagnosis has to be confirmed with culture and it should be more than or equal to two culture positive UTI in six months or more than three such events in one year. A thorough history and physical examination should be done to find out risk factors or complicating factors, which might prompt additional testing. Education and advice on behavior modifications and lifestyle modification is a must in these cases. Now, if the lady is postmenopausal, consider vaginal estrogen with or without lactobacillus probiotics. If the lady is premenopausal and infections are usually postcoital, consider initiation of low dose antibiotic within 2 hours of sexual activity for 6 to 12 months. For premenopausal women where recurrent UTI is not related to sexual activity, consider initiation of daily low dose antibiotic prophylaxis for at least 6 to 12 months. I don't know if you are aware. Even vaccines are available as it is such a common problem among women. So two vaccines are available. One is which can be taken orally and the other is vaginal vaccine. However, no study till date has been able to prove a preventive role of vaccine in cases of recurrent UTI as compared to placebo. So it still remains an area to be researched more. As far as the follow-up is concerned, no laboratory follow-up is necessary if the lady is asymptomatic after treatment. For recurrent UTI, consider antibiotic prophylaxis or self-initiated therapy. Even for the cases where the infections are recurrent, urologic structure evaluation is very rarely indicated. Usually what happens that those women who already have a known structural abnormality will go into more recurrent UTIs. For recurrence, education about risk factor is extremely important. So, to summarize, urinary tract infections are the most common bacteria infection in a human body. These are much more common in women as compared to men owing to their anatomy. Recurrences are pretty usual. Management of acute uncomplicated UTI is very simple, but it's very important that you give a lot of attention to history and risk factors in order to prevent further recurrences. So that's it for today. This is the minimal basic requirement which all practitioners who are looking after women's health must know about urinary tract infections. I hope it helps. Thank you.